Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. Today we are doing something a little different and we're not doing DIY crafts, we are doing DIY furniture. So I hope you guys just stick around. I think you will absolutely love this video and let's go ahead and get straight into it. All right, you guys, we are gonna start with the chalked aged gray color, a good old shippy brush. I told you this ain't gonna be fancy. And just so you know, all of the um, furniture I did clean with crud cutter first, and then I went over it with a wet, warm towel and then let them dry. So as you can see, I am going over this. I didn't take off a glossy finish. I did not sand it. That's what's awesome about chalk paint. And I am doing my good old messy coat. I am just making sure that I cover majority of this. I am going to sand it down and distress it a little bit. So I'm not too worried about the full coverage. I do want this to have more of a distressed look. So I'm going to bring this all the way down to the bottom. Make sure you're checking your sides because you don't want those drips going in to the little curves and all of that goodness. So Keep on going all the way down. Don't worry about the brush strokes. We'll take care of that. Now for the bottom part, I didn't do the actual bottom of the table. Nobody's gonna see that. But I did do like the bottom lip of the table. And of course we gotta hit our legs. So for the legs, you guys, I kind of just do <laughs> a slap it back and forth kind of motion with my chippy brush. I know I sound very professional and I definitely know what I'm doing here in the furniture world. That's a lie. So as you can see, I'm just bringing the brush back and forward, back and forward. Oh, there's hanky poo. And then I take it outside. I sand it down with the 220 grit just to get all of those brush strokes off, distress it in the areas that I want more distressing on. And then I will clean it off with a wet, um, rag that way i could get all of that debris off now comes the fun part y'all um we are gonna get right into this transfer so i let that completely dry now i'm taking this redesign by prima i got this on amazon i will leave the link in my amazon store this is my first time attempting one of these and let me tell you a warning label <laughs> if you have arthritis in the hand a big project like this is you do not want to do it. This was a lot on my hands. Um, I do not have arthritis in my hands, but if you do, I could imagine this would not go well. All right. So you take it out. It comes in two pieces and it comes with a film underneath. You want to try your best not to touch the actual transfer. So you can see I'm getting painter's tape. We are going to hold that down in place after I've measured it and I got my placement. Then you lay it on your table. I did not clear this or anything. This is just chalk paint, cleaned it up, and now I'm laying the transfer. I did wait 24 hours after painting to do this. So I smooth this out. I make sure that I put my painter's tape so that we don't have this moving around on us here. And then it comes with this little wooden spatula. You're gonna start in small sections. So like I started with the numbers first, and then I go over to the letters. That way you know where you're starting, where you're finishing. And this, y'all, this took a lot of time. The outcome was absolutely beautiful, but it does take a lot of time. I did try it with my Cricut, like big scraper, but every inch of me was like, no, you need the wooden one. So here I am, I'm peeling this back. You need to go very slowly because you guys, if the transfer doesn't like stick right away or you miss a spot, all you have to do is lay it back down and then you can just scrape it a little bit more and you keep doing this. We're doing the first half first. Now they do come in smaller like designs and things like that too. You don't have to have something this large and in charge, but you know me, go big or go home. So you're gonna continue to do this until we get to the very end. You can see I still have my painter's tape on here, just trying to keep control of little sections at a time. So look at how cute that looks already. Okay, so after we're done with this, we need to put the other side of the transfer on. Uh, but first, you can see I'm burnishing. This is what they say you do, burnish it. And that's basically rubbing the transfer, which is almost kind of like a tissue papery, like 
filling, I guess, you're burnishing in, so you're smoothing it into the table. Okay, so for this one, how I do this is I line up the biggest part, which is the cow. I overlap it just a hair, just so we don't see like the a line going through it. I overlap it just a little bit. Again, using the biggest part of the transfer as my guide as to where to line this up. Then I'm just going to go in again. We're going to apply our painter's tape. Obviously not to the middle, you guys. Don't do that. Um, so I'm doing this a little slower just so you guys can see. Then we'll apply the painter's tape. You're going to get that scraper again. And you guys, take your time. Have a glass of wine with you. Cup of tea. And, and you're just going to have to relax. Okay. Now I wanted to show this. You see how all of the shininess on the sides, that needs to go away. If you were to clear it, that would show through your clear. So you could see my bird or my rooster or my chicken, whatever that is. See how it's kind of cloudy now. So we're going to get a like micro microfiber cloth. There are fancier things you can use, but I didn't have any of those fancy things. So we are now burnishing this. So I am rubbing all around the letters where the the outline of the transfer is and we will eventually after you're done see you could totally see a difference where i've rubbed versus where i haven't and you're going to do that for this entire thing okay and you guys i got so much help from um upcycled by breeze uh, Facebook page, definitely go in there. My girl, Jen, she was so helpful. And then, um, I am just taking polyacrylic water-based clear coat. I'm going to do co two coats of this on top and that is it. Polyacrylic is great for indoor use. It's great for high traffic areas. So, um, I definitely recommend this. I know other people use waxes and things like that. I don't have any of those products. So I was trying to use what I had, on hand without having to go buy a bunch of stuff. So polyacrylic is, um, uh, what do you want? Uh, blah, 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 blah. It's not thick and it dries super fast. So you don't want to keep going over and over the same spot or it's going to get sticky and it's not going to go well. So make sure you're going over. You could see that is a light. I'm going over that lightly, like going over the back. Oh, gosh. There's a reason I don't do furniture videos. <laughs> Let me know you guys if you like these. And this is the outcome, sorry, I had put it in my booth. Didn't have it all set up yet, but it looks so gorgeous in there. The transfer is absolutely stunning and you don't see any of that shiny residue on it whatsoever. So I highly recommend this. Again, it's kind of a lot of work, but I will say it is definitely worth the work. So this is for selling my booth. All right. That was the first furniture flip in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really wanted to, one, I was making these anyways for our new booth at the Lewisburg Antique Market. And I was like, you know what? I might as well film it because I don't have like the supplies yet, or maybe I never will, um, that are I don't know, I guess you could say like higher end, like I don't have fancy paint brushes. I don't have fancy paints. I don't have fancy tools. I mean, none of that stuff. Like I am just super basic with the furniture. So I wanted to show you guys how you can make or flip old pieces in your home or maybe that you find on Facebook marketplace or thrift stores or garage sales and how you can do it using things you probably already have around the house. Um, with the exception of the redesign by Prima. I actually bought that a while back to use on something for our house and never used it. But you guys, I hope you guys are enjoying these. I hope it inspires you to flip some old furniture, find some old furniture and just have fun with it. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the last two furniture flips. Have a good one, you guys. Okay, here is our next one. I've had this, you guys, sit in my garage for I do not know how long. It was $5. I did pre-sand it, and now I am, again, cleaned it with cred cutter, sanded it, and then I uh, cleaned it with some water. So now I'm just taping this off because I do want to keep the sides their natural wood color. I, I love that, and yeah, 
as much wood as I could save, I will. Now taking my Rich Black by Folk Art and my little mini sponge roller, um, I'm gonna go ahead and coat the tops, the sides, and the little like panels that are underneath. Everly picked me a flower. So sweet, my little girl. And um, we are gonna do that for the top. And I don't know, I must have cut it out, but there's the uh, the shelves I painted. You guys don't get to see that. But I took this brush and I did get the creases of the shelf, like the sides, and then I went over it with the sponge roller to get a nice smooth finish. You guys can tell I got dressed for the day and I'm looking super fancy as always. You are welcome. So you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up. I only had to do one coat of this. The Rich Black Folk Art Chalk Paint is phenomenal. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bring this to my house because it's getting humid. And then after it fully dries, I am using the uh, Rust-Oleum Matte Chalk Clear. They're clear stuff. I haven't used this in a long time and I was very skeptical about it because one, it's a lot thicker than like polyacrylic or spar urethane, but I will say this actually gives it a true matte finish because polyacrylic says matte on there. There is a matte version, but when it dries, it still gives you kind of like that glossy look, kind of like matte Mod Podge does. This gives you the matte chalk paint finish. So I actually really liked it. It clear, it dries down clear. So I really like this. It does say to apply it with a synthetic brush which I did and it came out really good. So after coating this, Everett had just woke up. I was up at 5.30 in the morning doing this, you guys, how to get it done. All right, so again, make sure you get these sides really good and any of like the little details you see that really like white, make sure you clean that off or else you're going to have that dry and it's gonna be a cloudy glob of a mess here. So after I'm done doing that, I do do two coats on the shelving in the top. Now I'm taking antique old finish. So just a, a wood oil, and I am just bringing this to its natural state. I love this because it was, you can tell it was handmade. On the other side, there are like the imprints of the hearts where the person making it was like trying to figure out where they wanted to place it. And little things like that, I feel like add so much character to a piece and I love that and I love the natural wood. I think it's awesome that these are the pieces that are still around, the things that were handmade. Isn't that crazy when you think about it? I mean, really. Um, so you guys, this is how it looks. It is in my booth for sale. I love this and it took me a long time. This has seriously been our garage. Look at the little desk too that matches it. Oh my gosh, it's so darling. Okay. So this is our last one. Now, I I found this at the antique market, you guys, okay? But I had to have them. So the the bigger one I think I bought for 16, the smaller one is 14. Now these have, these were handmade. Like if you can see the bottom of these, somebody handmade these in their garage. They are so awesome. They have like cup rings on them. They're just so old. And I, I love that about these pieces. I love that you can take, I don't know. I sound crazy, but anyways, let me, let me, let me tell you what I'm doing here. Okay. I'm dropping the tape measure. So I'm trying to find my middle point here. I cleaned this with cred cutter. I did not sand it or nothing. I just cleaned these tables off really good. We tightened the legs. We put some wood glue, um, on any like little cracks and stuff. And then now I am using my painter's tape and we are going to create some lines. So you can see I have my, I think that one's two inches thick or one and a half inches thick. And I'm using that as my guide to um, straight lines, okay? So I have those two, they looked not straight though. I was better eyeballing it than using the actual tape. Okay, so now I'm gonna get another piece. This is smaller. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. So I lined those up. Now I'm gonna bring that across. And that's just guiding us so that we have the same like spacing. And then I use this really thin one. Ooh, I love it. I love it. Did the same thing for the small one as well. Now this is, is it, 
no, it's not called nautical. Maybe it is. I don't know. It's by Rust-Oleum. I will link it in my Amazon store for you. I just picked it up at Walmart. Walmart is selling Rust-Oleum now, you guys, and it's cheaper than the hardware stores. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do two coats of this here. And I love this. I loved the rings on the table from cups. I loved the just, I mean, look at it. It's original. Somebody used this and they loved it and they built it by with their own hands. It wasn't manufactured somewhere. And I ended up labeling these in my booth as uh, dad's garage tables. I just, I thought they were fun. So again, using that same chalked matte clear and my synthetic brush, I am giving this a clear coat. I do two on the top since it's a table and people will be using it. And I love the way these turned out. I don't know if y'all love old stuff, but I do. And I just wanted to show you guys, like there are so many pieces that are probably in your home or you see at garage sales or thrift stores that you can easily turn into home decor. Like this can fit with modern farmhouse. It could fit in a trendy apartment in New York. I mean, it it's endless, you guys. And you can see right here, they turned out so great. Look at the rings on the table. I don't know why I love that. I don't know why I love that. This, the top table was definitely like a side table with a shelf on it at one point and we gave it new love. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoy the bloopers. Bye. That's okay. Who needs a hint? Oh man. Like the biggest dog sobber ever. Oh, and it has grass in it. Him. Hey everyone, what was that weird camera? Hey everyone. Oh no. That's not a part of it. It's not a part of it.